Okay, so in this lab, we need to configure OSPF version 3. I'll start with router 1. Here's the console of router 1. First thing I'll do is verify that IP version 6 unicast routing is enabled. And there you go, you can see that the command has been enabled. So show run will show us that this command has been enabled. That is required to run OSPF version 3. In other words, to run unicast routing protocols such as OSPF or EIGRP. Looking at the configuration, we can see that the loopback interface has been configured and so has gigabit 000. So IP version 6 addresses have been configured. The command show IP interface brief shows us that no IP version 4 addresses have been configured. That's fine because we're not using IP version 4 in this lab, we are using IP version 6. So the command show IPv6 interface brief shows us that this IP address has been configured on gigabit 000. We can see that the interface is up up. We can also see that this IP address has been configured on the loopback interface. Show IPv6 interface will show us more detail. So scrolling up, there's the command. This IP address has been configured on the gigabit interface. We can also see that the router has joined various multicast groups, such as all hosts and all routers. The loopback interface is also configured with this IP address, which is correct per the network topology diagram interfaces up up. So show IPv6 protocols shows us that OSPF is not enabled on the router. So let's enable OSPF. Command is IPv6 router OSPF process number. In this example, I'll select one. Notice the error message. OSPF version three process one could not pick a router ID. That's because we don't have any IP version four addresses configured on the router. OSPF version three requires a router ID in IP version four format. So we need to use the command router ID 1.1.1.1 in this example to give the router a router ID. So again, show IP interface brief. No IP version four addresses are configured on the router. We do have IP version six addresses, but we need to enable OSPF on the router, and I should say show IPv6 protocols. And in this example, we can see that OSPF is enabled on the router using process ID one, but we haven't enabled OSPF on any interfaces. So going back through our running configuration, we need this command, IPv6 unicast routing, we need IP addresses configured on interfaces such as these. We need to enable OSPF and specify a router ID because there are no IP version 4 addresses. And unlike OSPF for IP version 4, in OSPF version 3, in other words, unlike OSPF version 2, in version 3, we need to specify OSPF on the interfaces. In other words, enable OSPF with the correct process ID and correct area number on the interfaces of the router. So I'm gonna do that both on the gigabit 000 interface as well as the loopback interface. So the command show IPv6 OSPF interface, packet trace unfortunately doesn't support the brief command, so I'll use interface without brief. This command shows us which interfaces have OSPF enabled on them. And we can see that OSPF is now enabled on gigabit 000 with this router ID and this process number and this area number. This is a broadcast network. In other words, it's ethernet. On the loopback interface, we can also see that OSPF is enabled. Again, area number is area one, process ID is one, Router ID is this. So now show IP v6 
protocols shows us that OSPF is enabled on these interfaces, gigabit 000 and the loopback interface. Show IPv6, OSPF database, very similar to IP version 4, we can see the OSPF database, which shows us LSA type 1s. There's one router in the local area at the moment. There's no LSA type 2s showing in the database at the moment. The database does show other OSPF link state types, but I won't discuss that here. The important things to note is firstly, show IPv6 protocols. OSPF is enabled on the router. Show IPv6 OSPF interface. OSPF is enabled on the correct interfaces, gigabit 000 and the loopback interface. Show IPv6. OSPF neighbor. We don't have any neighbor relationships at the moment because I need to enable OSPF on router two. So let's do that and see if an OSPF relationship is formed between router one and router two. Okay, so here's router two. Show IPv6 protocols. OSPF is not enabled at the moment on this router. Show IPv6 interface brief. IP addresses are configured on the router on gigabit 000. This looks right. This interface has this IP address configured, which is right. This IP address is configured on the loopback interface, which looks right. Do we have IPv6 unicast routing enabled? Yes, we do. So that's good. So enable OSPF. IPv6 router. Routing protocol is OSPF. Process ID is 1. Once again, we need to specify a router ID because no IP version 4 IP addresses are configured on the router. Show IPv6 protocols shows us that OSPF is not running on any interfaces. So we need to go on to the relevant interfaces, so gigabit 000, and enable OSPF in the right area. This interface needs to be an area 1. The loopback interface needs to be an area 0. Gigabit 001 needs to be in area zero. So show IPv6 protocols. Notice this interface is configured in area one. In OSPF, these two interfaces are in area zero. Show IPv6 OSPF neighbor. A neighbor relationship is being established to router one. State at the moment is two way. Relationship has just gone to full, so show IPv6 OSPF neighbor. Notice full relationship, router one is the designated router. Show IPv6 OSPF interface. We can see that OSPF is enabled on this interface, gigabit 000. Router ID is this, process ID is one, area is one, the local router is the backup designated router has a priority of one. Designated router is router one. We can see timer intervals such as hello timer and dead timer. Show IPv6 route. Have we learnt routes through OSPF? Yes, we have. We've learnt about this loopback interface via OSPF. Notice the next hop is this IP address, which is not shown in the topology that is the link local address of router one. So show IPv6 interface. Notice this is the link local address on router one, and that's the IP address that router two sees as the next hop in the IP routing table. OSPF forms neighbor relationships using link local addresses not using global unicast addresses. So that looks great. Can router 2 ping the loopback of router 1? Answer is yes, it can. On router 1, show IPv6 route. 
we are learning inter-area routes through OSPF. Can we ping the loopback of router 2? Yes, we can. Can we ping this IP address, which is in area 0 on router 2? Yes, we can. So OSPF is configured and working in area 1. Now let's configure OSPF on router 3 and router 4.